Hello everybody and welcome to the third installment of the Energica Electrifying Podcast. This is your host, EVJ Val. This podcast is brought to you by Energica, the single manufacturer of the FIMNL Moto E World Cup, as a way to keep the light shining on this new series for electric motorcycles and its protagonists, but also to provide a moment of distraction in a time of uncertainty such as the one we're facing right now. But before we introduce our first guest, a little reminder, please stay safe, stay home and stay charged. Since you're listening right now, you surely have found a way to get to our podcast. But in any case, please make sure to follow Energic on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and LinkedIn to stay up to date with all the content we release on a daily basis. But enough talking from my side. Time to introduce our guest for today, who has rewritten the history of motorcycle racing by becoming the first ever Moto E World Cup champion in 2019. Riding for Team Trentino Grazini Moto E, his name is Matteo Ferrari. Hello there. Hello everybody. Ciao Valerio. How's life? <laughs> How's life? <laughs> it's really, really weird in this period, but uh, uh, I, I changed my, <laughs> my, my days here at home. But uh, I'm happy because uh, I, I stay a lot with, uh, with my mom, with my family. And this is very difficult during, during a normal season because uh, we have a lot of, of races, a lot of tests. So I'm happy about that. So considering your age, like you turned 23. Yeah, yeah. So now you're, uh, you're go back being the sort of young boy with, living with family full time, while in the past you were traveling a lot for, uh, for racing. So Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, this is positive because <laughs> you can remember all the, all the things when, uh, when you're, you are lit. So I'm really happy about that. Okay, so how are you keeping yourself entertained? We saw a few videos of you doing all sorts of uh, challenges with uh, things to do and training. What about the, the rest of the day? Of course, uh, I train a lot because it's very important to keep focus on the on this season. And, uh, and also I, I read a lot of books because I think it's very important to, to study. And, uh, and also I watch a lot of races also of the past. And of course, of Moto E of last season, because I wanna, wanna study the other riders, the, the right style, because we don't have a lot of information, you know, because we, we can see only the e pole and the race. This is my, my, my day. Uh, and of course, uh, <laughs> during these days, I, I cooked a lot. I have a challenge now about that. Uh, so mm, we will see <laughs> how, can I, how I can try to cook all the things. It seems to be the new passion of all riders. I spoke last week with uh, Xavier Simeone and he told me that he started cooking as well. He said that uh, he's doing a lot of things with vegetables. What are your things? More traditional <laughs> from your area or uh, more healthy? Depends, uh, of course, healthy because uh, I have I have to do a diet, of course, because I'm a rider, and I'm an athlete. But of course, uh, here in Romagna, in uh, in Rimini, uh, there are there are a lot of <laughs> things very very good. So, like a piadina, like lasagne, cappelletti. So, I I'll try different things. Thanks for reminding me of the piadina and all the dishes you have. <laughs> Because uh, obviously I'm Italian and I, I guess almost everybody can hear it, but uh, I'm based in Barcelona, so I kind of miss that, <laughs> that type of food. <laughs> so, so thanks. You just made me hungry. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want, I, I can send you some, some capelletti if you want or something like yeah. that. That, that that's great. I'll give you my address as soon as the as the interview is over. Okay, okay, man. <laughs> <laughs> Last year you fulfilled your dream. Tell us, how does it feel to enter the new season as the reigning champion? Obviously, whenever the season will resume. Uh, uh, you know, last season was uh, was incredible for me because uh, I won a, a title, but the first title of Moto E in uh, in a world champion. For me, Moto E was a uh, Great experience, but also I leave my comfort zone because uh, I always ride a, a traditional engine. And uh, last season, I, I try uh, another things 
this is for me incredible because uh, I, adapt, I adapt myself uh, to a new world. And, uh, and I also proud of that because uh, I'm, uh, I'm Italian and also an Ezica is uh, a big uh, Italian dream. So I'm really happy about that. You kind of, uh, in the first races, you kind of kept the leaders in check. You were always in the top five, but it was kind of like you, was, you were studying and you, you're studying the rest of your opponents. And at the same time, it looked like that you were trying to stay out of trouble. Uh, is it something that you thought beforehand? Is it a strategy that you thought, okay, there are four rounds. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's better if I don't take too many risks at the beginning. I I thought a lot about that because um, I think when when you have uh, only six races in a, in a championship, it's very important to arrive uh, during all the races. And uh, during Saxering and uh, and Red Bull Ring, we had a really strange race because there there was really difficult condition with the weather, with the weather. I tried to only to to arrive and uh, to to achieve points. The, that is that is very very important in, in a short championship. You know, I want to win <laughs> all all the races, but uh, it's very important to keep focus on on the title. O of course, uh, during the during the season, I I want to try to do my best and to try to to achieve a podium all the races. But uh, I think. Uh, Uh, a great rider have to thought about the the title. So, I, I, of course, I I thought about the first two races about the title. Yeah, thinking about the bigger picture, and uh, obviously in your case it worked out. So, but do you think you had that bit extra that you could you could have used at the front? You you could have been faster in the first two races, or you thought that you were at your limit. Mm, no, uh, I I keep fo focus on uh, on the race because uh, I I saw, uh, for example, Granado crashed during the the Red Bull Ring, and uh, and also other riders that are very very fast during the season. So I think uh, every race have uh, have have a different condition, and you have to understand where is the limit. I I rode uh, on my 80% of my of my speed of course but um it's frustrating at the beginning but you can understand uh, this uh, when when you win a title of course so, of course and then what 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 did it change in Misano because obviously in Misano you really you really dominated was it also because it's your home track or do you think based on the standings that you had to uh, mm. put that 20% more? Well, uh, um, in, in Misano, uh, the, 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 only, the only thing uh, changed was the, was the weather because uh, we had uh, all the three days with, uh, with sun. I, th there, there was the opportunity to keep, fo to keep focus and to win the race. So I, I did uh, a, very good, uh, a very good race one. And uh, I had also the opportunity to watch race one and to, to understand where I can improve. This was very, very important. And, and Misano was the first race with a double race. So uh, the first week weekend with a double race. So um, I think this is uh, this change from, from the uh, first two races. Do, would you like to have two races in every round? I, I don't know. Uh, because um, I, I did uh, uh, during the last season super bike so when when you when you do super bike you have two races it's uh, uh it's better because you have another chance during <laughs> during the weekend yeah. but but of course i like the the program of moto gp so i like more one race during a weekend so you mentioned a few times that you work closely with your big friend uh, michele pierro about your yeah. approach to races about the, your race craft Some riders said that um, when you're in full control, the time kind of slows down. It's not doesn't only apply to race racers, but only apl applies in general to every athlete. So you have full control of the situation, kind of time slows down. Obviously, as much as it can slow down while you race at full speed. Is it what happened to you like in Misano last year? 
Yeah, yeah, of course, because um, I work a lot about that. Because when when you have uh, uh, all the things under control, uh, you can do your best. It's very, very difficult, you know, because uh, uh, there are a lot of things to do during a, during a race. Uh, and of course, when you have to, to understand uh, also a new bike uh, is com- completely, di- uh, all the things are completely different. Uh, I remember that um, when, I, when I was forced du- during the Misano race, uh, was completely different. It, it was very emotional because uh, you can... You can hear the the other riders because the <laughs> because the motto is very very silent. So yeah, very, uh, very a lot more quiet than yeah uh, yeah of course. Yeah. But uh, it, it's very very fun because uh, you can ride the bike without uh, any pressure, you know. And uh, and this is very very fun and very very good for me. Uh, so I I work a lot with uh, with Michele because uh, he he rode with MotoGP with is with Superbike and uh, he is very fast uh, with uh, both bike. So for me uh, this was very important to understand where where is the limit. Uh, you you are only your limit and uh, and for this reason I I work uh, on on my riding style on my mind. To, to understand uh, which method I can I, I can control my limit. Speaking of extra, you've done your homework and got ready for the couch lap. Are you ready to review it with us? Yes, of course. Uh, we will see my lap. Okay, let's have a look. So we're here. We look at the your oh that looks like you for real. The only difference is uh, that yeah. <laughs> Moto E, and we're in a E paddock, but um, flying lap here. Ooh, Ooh. that's autopilot. Yeah, autopilot. Yeah, but the big risk. <laughs> <laughs> going, going Misano too. Starting with the the new lap. We already saw on the right that your lap was pretty fast. Yeah. But, pretty. Uh, yeah, already faster than Simeon. Ooh, perfect line on. Perfect line on the first two turns. Yeah, of course, but um, the most important thing uh, here in Moto E is to understand the engine brake. So also in PlayStation was really difficult, uh, okay. but the first uh, the first sector was uh, was really good for me. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. That's uh, that's perfect. I play with a PlayStation and I can't even uh, even take one turn as good as you. <laughs> so. So yeah. Uh, now we are approaching the Quercia. Yeah, a really, yeah. really fast corner. There it is. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, without traction control, it's very difficult to to manage the power of Moto E. I could see that. I could see that. But still, you s- didn't seem like you lose too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, lot. but uh, uh, I have to uh, to understand uh, which is the limit on PlayStation. So I think <laughs> if. Uh, if I, I if I try to 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 push more, I can improve the lap time. Of course, and you did the Misano full yeah. gas, and you did well here. Uh, so yeah. Good, very tight, very tight compared to Simeon, who was kind of all over the place. Sorry, Xavier, but that's that's <laughs> I watched this lap, and uh, last turn, your very good, yeah. Um, there you uh, go, finish line. Ooh, 137, 297. 297. Great. Not, not, not so bad, but uh, I have to use more uh, more track uh, on the on the PlayStation because... Uh, did, you, did you change any setup? Like, you really change the setup on the bike or you use it out of the box? On- no, no, I, I didn't change setup because uh, uh, I don't know we, which is the good method, so... I, I only did this lap. Uh, I, of course, uh, uh, I try to to understand which is the right uh, the right way, but uh, only to only only ride like uh, like real. Ah, okay. So 
So I, I, I could have imagined you in another time, like uh, calling your uh, your uh, your crew chief uh, Beppe and ask yeah. for set up uh, for the PlayStation. I wonder, yeah, of course. I really wondered the re- what what his reaction would have been. Uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah, of course. I I of course I call uh, Beppe because uh, I saw the, the, uh, another rider did uh, thirty five point nine, and uh, I, I I wanted to to beat him so. Now, <laughs> during this day, I, I train a lot uh, on the PlayStation. Yeah, you're still heading the, the competition, which is only Simeon for now in the, in the couch lab. But mm-hmm. uh, if you can improve that further, who knows? Maybe uh, some of your uh, rivals will manage to beat your time. But uh, you have more time. You can, you, maybe we can do like a sort of... Um, Second try and see if you can get better at it. But uh, okay, congratulations okay. on your lap. I'll try myself to improve it a little bit. But I don't. I don't even want to tell you what my time is because it was. It's so <laughs> bad. It's so no. bad. It's it's unbelievable. But uh, obviously, I'm 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 a lot older than you, and I grew up with uh, using the keyboard and not using the levers that you have on the on the gamepad yeah. on PlayStation. So for me, it's only on off. So no, really, no. <laughs> really choosing the gas properly, it's very difficult. And yes, I'm making a lot of excuses right now. <laughs> that's the truth. That's the truth. It would um, be fun uh, to, to do a, um, a race on PlayStation with, uh, with all the riders of Moto E. That would be great. That would be great. Uh, yeah. That message. That's a message for Donna. Virtual race for Moto E. <laughs> yeah, of course. Please do it. Please do it soon. <laughs> yeah, because I, I saw the, the race of MotoGP in Muzello and was very, very fun. So for me, it would be, would be good. No, no, that would be, that, that would really be fun to watch for sure. For sure. Good. Going back to the racing, um, you seem the, to be the rider who mastered the Energy Kayako course the best way. What's the secret? I, I think um, the key is to to understand the the tires because uh, um, we have Michelin tires like uh, Moto GP and uh, we can we can do a very good angle uh, in the middle of the corner so uh, we uh, we have to understand a lot this because uh, uh, you don't have to to break too um, too hard and uh, you have to to do a very very fast you have to do very fast the corner, like a, uh, like a, you know, 125 two stroke, you know, uh, and uh, and of course, um, the the power is is, uh, is like a, um, when the acceleration like a super bike because uh, I, I saw we did a, a 3.0 during the during the start in the uh, of the race so. Re- really, really fat compared to a super bike. So, yeah, it's it's incredible. Uh, seeing yeah. it live, obviously from uh, from the pit wall, the way you accelerate is like you you're there and suddenly you're gone, and uh, everybody. Yeah. Like, the, the first race was I was like, what did just happen? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I was so 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 impressed. And also, yeah, there, there's no warm up lap, which means that you know you line up and then you're gone. And, I'm, and I was like, okay, so the race started already. <laughs> yeah, of course, because uh, I'm um, in the past, uh, in all my career, I, I was yes. very bad uh, in, uh, in qualifying and also during the first lap of the race. And, uh, and of course, uh, for me, uh, the, the Moto E was a big chance to, to change that. So... Mm, is a, is another way to to understand the import the importance of the first laps. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I completely agree with you. And um, now to just end this this podcast, as I as I told uh, as I told Eric before and uh, Xavier last week, uh, I would like you to just share some words of uh, encouragement in your in your language italian not in your dialect because mm-hmm. otherwise okay. <laughs> <I understand. laughs> very little people would understand it but um yeah uh, some words in italian about wishing well 
and give a little bit of motivation to all the people around who are obviously sharing uh, this uh, strange situation with us. Okay. Uh, allora, voglio, voglio salutare tutto, tutto il popolo italiano perché so che è un momento molto difficile, ma dobbiamo mantenere, mantenere la calma e mantenere la fiducia e penso che questo sarà, sarà molto importante perché quando, quando pensi positivo le cose vanno in quella direzione perciò eh, so, che, so che è frustrante in certi momenti ma ne pa passerà presto e secondo me abbiamo fatto tutto nel modo, nel modo più giusto e possiamo solo continuare a fare, a fare così quindi mi raccomando fiducia e positività sempre e eh, stay home eh, eh, sicuramente, <ride> sicuramente restare a casa è una cosa eh, che, si, che dicono tutti ma bisogna capirla a fondo no? eh, perché chiaramente eh, ci sono tante persone che lavorano all'ospedale per, per curarci e se noi stiamo a casa eh, sicuramente stiamo dando una mano eh, facendo anche una cosa molto semplice perciò rimaniamo a casa tutti ok thank you so much Matteo for this lovely interview and uh, yeah, well, as... thank you And as everyone else, I, I really hope to see you soon on track and that uh, we can go Me back too. to our lives and enjoy racing and um, enjoy this uh, wonderful show that uh, Moto E is. So take care of yourself. Thank you. And, thank you so much. And have a lovely day. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Ciao. Thank you for listening to the Electrifying Podcast will be online with a new episode every Wednesday at 4 o'clock Central European Summer Time. And remember, we're all in this together, so stay positive and stay charged. See you next week!